This tutorial is part one of two tutorials on how to create text and line effects in Shotcut using the text simple and crop filters. Part one is intended for beginners. It shows how to set up a basic text and line without animation. And along the way, it takes the time to explain each step along with some of the options and shortcuts that can help you to use Shotcut more easily and efficiently. If you are already familiar with Shotcut, you will probably want to skip part one and go right to part two, which moves a little more quickly and shows how to create animation effects with the basic line and text that we will create in part one. Before we go any further, let's use the help about command to show that I am using Shotcut version 21.06.29. However, the techniques I am using are very simple and should work just the same even with versions that are quite a bit older. Now let's set up a project that will contain our text and line effect. You'll want to pay attention to the video mode that you use for the project. In this case, I am using HD 1080p, which means a screen resolution of 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels tall. I'm also using a frame rate of 30 frames per second. These numbers will be helpful when we begin to position the text and line on the screen. Let's assemble the clips that we are going to use for this tutorial. The first clip is actually just a picture which I will use as a background behind the text and line. I open up a browser window and drag the picture into the playlist. I also go ahead and drag this clip down from the playlist and drop it onto the timeline, creating the first video track. Since this tutorial is for beginners, let me pause here and mention several options. Option 1. You do not have to use a background clip. You could set up the text and line on a black or transparent screen and then use the result in another video. But it will be easier for us to see what we are doing in this tutorial if we go ahead and use a background. Option 2. You don't have to use the playlist. You can drag the clip directly into the timeline and skip the playlist entirely. I generally use the playlist because to me it makes it easier to pull different clips into or out of the timeline as I try out different ideas and arrangements. Option 3. There is another way to bring in a clip. I think it is easiest with existing files to drag them from a browser and drop them in the playlist. But you can also use the open file command through the menu or in the toolbar to open up a clip. In fact, let's use something similar to that third option to open up or rather to create clips that will hold the line and the text. Click on the open other command either from the menu or on the toolbar and choose text as the type to open. Type the text you want to use into the text box. Before clicking on OK, make sure that the background color is set to transparent. That should be the default, because normally we want whatever clip is below this to show through with just the text on top. Click OK. Now you can see your text in the preview panel. It may not be obvious, but this preview is a source preview. The text clip has not yet been stored anywhere in the project. You can click on the tabs to see the source and project previews to see the difference. I could drag this clip from the source preview and drop it directly into the timeline. But once again, I prefer first to put it in the playlist. Open the playlist, drag the text clip from the preview window, and drop it in the playlist. Alternately, we could open the playlist and click on the plus button. If you hover over that button, you will see what it will do. It will add whatever clip is showing in the source preview into the playlist. Let's create the second line of text. Once again, I use Open Other and choose Text. I type in the text I want to use, make sure the background color is transparent, and click OK. Once again, I can see the text clip I just created in the source preview, and I need to transfer it either to the timeline or to the playlist. We could follow the steps above, but let me teach you a keyboard shortcut. Shift V. Whenever you press Shift V, Shotcut will copy whatever clip is in the source preview directly to the playlist, just like this. We still need to create the line to go with our text. Once again, I click on Open Other. But I don't see an option for a line. Hmm. But wait. A line is simply a thin block of color, right? Let's use color as the type to open. I want my line to be white, so let me click on the color button, choose the color I want, and click on Select. Now the preview shows exactly what I just selected, a full screen of white. Obviously, I'm going to want to adjust this to turn it into a line. But before I do that, I'm going to press Shift V on the keyboard to copy this into the playlist just like this. So let's see what we've got in the playlist. Here is my background clip. 
Here is the white screen that I will turn into a line, and here are the two transparent screens that have text on them. If I double click on any of the clips, I can see what it looks like in the source preview. I can rearrange the order of these clips in the playlist, but for this project, I really don't need to, because the real magic is going to happen down in the timeline. I already dragged the background clip into the timeline earlier. Let's take a look. Remember that this background clip is really just a single picture. Shotcut has turned it into a short video clip for us. We can drag the edge of it to adjust the length of this video clip as desired. I'm arbitrarily setting this to be 10 seconds long. How do we get the text and line to show up on top of this background? This is where a non-linear video editor like Shotcut really shines. We can add additional video tracks which stack up on top of each other to get whatever effect we want to create. You just saw me add a track using the additional options menu, but as always there are other ways to get there. I can right click anywhere in the timeline to pop up those same additional options and add a track. Alternately, notice what is in parentheses for that add video track command. This tells me that I can press Control i to add a video track, just like this. Now I have four video tracks, one for each of the clips. I don't necessarily need to have one track per clip, but doing it this way makes it easier to create and manipulate each element of the text and line effect. One problem though, I can't see all four of the tracks at once. I could use the additional options menu to set the track height shorter, but personally I don't like to make them too small. Instead, I'm going to adjust the screen layout by putting the mouse cursor over this little line between the timeline and the preview window. When I click and drag that line, I can adjust the amount of space allocated to each one. You can do the same thing in other parts of the screen as well. Now that I can see all four video tracks, let's put one clip on each track. Remember that each track overlays the one below it, so normally it would matter which clip we put on which track. In this case, however, the only one that really matters is the background clip. We want it at the very bottom. All of the other clips are going to be transparent except where the text or line is, so it doesn't matter which one is on top of the other. After I drag each clip into a track, I adjust the length to match the 10 seconds of the background clip. As you can see, with all of the clips on the timeline, we have a bit of a jumbled mess, and currently our line is actually a full screen of white. Let's start with cutting that big white screen down to the size of the line we want. To make it easier to see what we're doing, let's turn off the two tracks that have text on them by clicking on the eye icon for each of those tracks. There are several ways we can cut this big white blob down into a line. All of them involve adding a filter. First, make sure the clip with the white screen is selected. Notice the red rectangle around the clip when you click on it in the timeline. Make sure that we're seeing the clip and not something after or before the clip by setting the playhead somewhere inside the clip. I can do this by clicking up here in the preview window or down here in the timeline once the clip is selected. Now click on the Filters tab and click on the plus button. We want to change the way this white blob looks, or in other words, we want to filter the video. So let's click on the Video Filters tab. Yes, there are a lot of filters here and I confess that I still have a long way to go before I understand all of them. But there are at least three filters that we could use to turn our big white screen into a line. We could use the mask filter to mask out just the parts that we want to show. But that filter can be complicated, and really, it is overkill for what we need here. Likewise, we could use the size position rotate filter, often called the SPR filter. But it too does more than we really need. The simplest filter to use is the Crop Rectangle filter. Let's click on that. When you add the Crop Rectangle filter, nothing seems to happen except now we see a box around the preview. This box shows us everything that is going to show through the Crop filter. If we click and drag on one of the corners of the box, we can see that the big white rectangle is getting cropped down to a smaller size. Using these corners is a quick way to adjust the crop size and the placement, but it is hard to be very precise. One way to be more precise is to put a grid on the preview screen. If you click on the little arrow next to the grid icon, you can choose various sizes of grids. I'm going to use a 4x4 grid. 
Now, watch what happens when you click and drag on one of the crop rectangle corners. As you get close to a grid line, it snapped into place. Let's use that effect to set the top of this crop rectangle right at the third horizontal grid line. So far, so good. But to get really precise, I need to use the numerical settings over on the left. Here you can see the position, X and Y, of the top left-hand corner of the crop rectangle. You can also see the size, width, and height of the rectangle. Notice how these numbers change as you drag any of the corners around. Notice that when I snap the top left-hand corner to the third grid line, the Y is set to 810. Remember the screen size that we talked about way back at the beginning of this tutorial? The height of the screen is 1080 pixels. If you divide that by 4 and multiply by 3, you get 810. We can directly type values into these settings. For example, let's say we want our line to begin at an X position of 40 pixels. Let's click on the first position box, delete the current value, and type in 40. Notice how the crop rectangle immediately adjusts to that position. If we want the line to end 40 pixels from the right side of the screen, we have to do a little math. Remember that we are using a screen resolution that is 1920 pixels wide. If our line begins at 40 pixels from the left and ends 40 pixels from the right, how many pixels wide is the line? 1920 minus 40 minus 40 equals 1840. Let's enter that into the size box. What about the height of this line? I want it to be 6 pixels high. Enter that into the second box next to size, and there we go. There is our line. Notice that there are also little up and down arrows next to each of the settings over here in the filter. These let you tweak the settings up or down one unit at a time. For example, let's click three times on the little up arrow for the Y setting. Now it has changed to 807, three pixels above the grid line. And since our line is six pixels thick, this positions our line so that it perfectly straddles that grid line at 810. Now we have our line, but where is the background? Why didn't the background track show through once we crop down this rectangle? Take a look at the last filter setting on the left. The padding color is the color that is filled in wherever the screen is cropped out. Currently, it looks like the padding color is black, and that is exactly what we are seeing. We can set this padding color to whatever we want, but notice this convenient button that lets us set it to transparent. That's what we want. As soon as we click it, our background now shows through everywhere except where the cropped rectangle of white is showing. Just what we want. Let's turn back on one of the text tracks and set up the text. Click on the text track to select it, and notice that the text is actually a filter, the text simple filter. We can adjust the position and size and color and font of the text by adjusting the filter settings. Since this is the lower line of text, we want it to sit just below the line we just made. Conveniently, when we use Open Other to create a text clip, it sets up the box holding the text to fill the bottom fourth of the screen. You can see the outline of this text box on the preview screen, and in the filter settings on the left, you can see that it is already positioned at a Y setting of 810. I can adjust the start of the text box to 40 and the width of the text box to 1840 to match the settings we used on the line we made earlier. The last two filter settings let me position the text within the box. I want it to be on the left and at the top of the text box. I want to make this font smaller, and I want it to be italic. The box to the right of the font color setting shows me part of the name of the font. If I click on that, I can choose a different font and I can set the font size. Click select to save these settings. Make sure the use font size box is clicked. Click on the font color box to change the color to a light gray and again click select to save that setting. Notice the thickness setting currently set at 3. This is the thickness of the outline around the text which may be hard to see against this background, but you can definitely see the difference when I reduce this to zero. This text now looks just the way I want it to, and we could stop here.
but I like to adjust the vertical size of the text box as well so that it is just tall enough to hold our text. For this font size, that is 90 pixels tall. This change does not make any difference in how the text looks, but it may make things a little easier when we start moving text around. Now I can turn back on the other text track and select that clip to show the text that needs to sit above the line. I will adjust the settings of the filter as I did before, but this time I will stay with the default font and size and that needs the height of the text box to be 100 pixels. I also need to position this text above the line, and this is where setting the height of the text box can be helpful. Just do the math. The line is at 810, the height of the text box is 100 pixels, subtract, and we need to set the top of the text box at 710, and that will position the text just above the line. Perfect. Now I just need to save my work and part one of this tutorial is complete. If you stick around for part two, it will start from this point and will show different ways to animate the text and the line, still only using the text simple and the crop filters. See you in part two.